Welcome to Mysteries, Myths, and Legends. I'm Taylor. I'm Savannah. And welcome to the show. Um, it's Wednesday. Mm-hmm. The best day of the week. We love it. We really do. Um, okay, so first and foremost, I'm just gonna give a disclaimer because your girl is a little bit sick. Um, mm-hmm. sorry if I sound weird. Um, sniffly, coffee, I got so many problems. Can't At even... least you're not as sick <laughs> as you were earlier this week. Oh, thank God. It was so bad. Oh, the sickness has overcame me. But we're on the up and up with mm-hmm. that, so thank God. Um, also, okay, serious moment, really sad news. Um, we all know Assistant Kiki and Juju. We mm-hmm. sadly had to put Kiki down this past weekend. Um, she had cancer, but, and it's really sad, you know, she did her job far better than Juju could ever yes but she's not suffering anymore so Mm -hmm. we're dedicating this episode to her love you keeks forever and always um maybe we'll get to see her ghost oh we love that maybe maybe kiki if you can hear me with um kiki if you can hear me give me a meow in the audio all right and we'll check back later on that yeah we'll see (laughs) okay sad moment over can't be sad anymore um about that um, what else? Okay, also, mm. shout out to, so we have some really awesome fans and slash friends, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, so Spotify has this, like, thing that they're doing now where you, like, you know, kind of, like, Spotify wrapped, like, at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't even know what this one's called. It's just, like, random. Yeah, this one's just, like, random in the middle of the year. They're just, like, going for it. It right. said, like, isn't, like, only you or something? Yeah, yeah, something, something, like, know. for you. Oh, I think that's what it is. Like, the for you Spotify page. Yeah, something like that. Um, and so, some of our fans, specifically Allie and Fisher, shout out, shout out, um, got, like, that they're, like, our number one, like, our podcast is their number one. So, shout out to them. And shout out to all Yay. the real fans. Supporting yeah, so us since it- day one. If anybody else has gotten that on their Spotify, um, let us know and we'll we'll shout you out too. Yes. Shout out, shout mm-hmm. out. Um, okay. Also, rate and review us. I got so many things to say. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Um, <laughs> I know. You have to do like one thing to the other. <laughs> literally. But uh, rate and review us on Apple Podcasts as per mm-hmm. usual. Okay. But Savannah, this is what I've been mm-hmm. waiting to tell you. Um, so this morning, we went to the beach and... I have lived here for six years now, and I this has never happened to me, so I was very confused. We were planning on leaving anyway, so like we had just gotten like out of the ocean from swimming, and mm-hmm. the like patrol whatever truck was like driving, and they had like a megaphone, and they were like kind of down the beach at first, and we could hear them saying something, and we were like mm, whatever, not important. And then they, like, drive closer to us, and they were like, everyone needs to evacuate the beach right now. Lightning <gasps> is striking. Everybody needs to get off the beach. Oh my we were God. like, what? Like, I've never... I didn't know we had to get off the beach when it was lightning. I mean, I've been at the beach during storms for so many times. Yeah, like, are you not allowed on the beach at all? Like, I thought I you were know. just not allowed in the water. I don't know, hmm. but... I, I guess it know. kind of makes sense. I mean, it makes sense, but I've just, like, it's I've just never heard It's just an open area. That. Right. So, but then, so after that, we're, like, walking back to our car, and we were, like, at the hose to spray our feet off, you know? Mm -hmm. And there were so many people leaving, because they made the announcement that, you know, you have to leave. And so we were, like, waiting in line at the rinse-off station. And this old man, like, was in front of us, like, rinsing off everything he had to his name. We were (laughs) standing there for, like, actually ten minutes, like, sir... I would just walk away and be like, I don't care. I'm <laughs> well, it wasn't my car we were in. I didn't want to get it, like, dirty. Right, yeah. But, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but so we were waiting there. He was literally, he spread his whole family, every chair, every towel, every, all his clothes. I'm like, sir. What? Go home. Like, please just rinse your feet and go. And then, so he's like, done. And does he hand us the hose? No, he doesn't hand us the hose. He starts spraying us. What? And we were like, um, <laughs> sir, this is highly inappropriate. And my friend was like, um, That's can so we just weird. please have the the hose, please? And he was like, <laughs> no, he was it. like creepily laughing. It was so disgusting. I hated every second of it. That's really weird. 
Right. Like, ew, oh get God. away. Mm-mm. Well, we are not about creepy me, old men. You just reminded me I have a, a beach related story. Because I was um in Hilton Head, South Carolina for like a Memorial Day weekend. Oh, yes. And fine. we were at the beach and they were like yelling at everyone to get out of the water because there was a shark. No, shark attack. Yes. That's scary. Um, and apparently the day before when we were actually in the water, like that same day, somebody had been bitten by a shark. Oh my God. That's scary. <laughs> yeah. So I guess I get away with that, but. Yeah, well, that's good. Is it weird that I've always yeah. kind of wanted to be bitten by a shark? Yes. That is no, weird. Not, I know. Not really. Like I'm not hoping for it, but I'm just like, mm. It might be a cool story. <laughs> I mean, it podcast. might be a cool story, but, like, <laughs> you could die or, like, lose a limb. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like, do I need both legs? <laughs> mm. I guess not. <laughs> I'm really kidding. Oh my God. But I'm not, also. So. Yeah. <laughs> there was also a lot of jellyfish on the beach. Oh, Has there I been don't like jellyfish. Too? Mm, no. Hmm. Not that I've seen. Yeah, I think I've seen in, um, like, Georgia area... South Carolina, there's been a lot of jellyfish, and I saw it when we were there. It's kind of crazy. Ooh, I don't like jellyfish at all. Have you ever been stung? No. I, I was so scared of getting stung because I saw them, like, when we were just walking on the beach, but then mm -hmm. when I went swimming, it was fine, so. Yeah. Yeah, no. A little crazy. <laughs> Sorry for that. I had a cough attack. I'm going to really try to not have any more cough attacks, but I can't promise <laughs> anything. Your girl is sick. Anyway, so Savannah, what you got for us this week? Okay, so have you heard of Bonaventure Cemetery? Um, no, I don't think so. Um, it's in Savannah, Georgia. Oh, Savannah. Shout out. Yeah, so it's a famous cemetery in, like, basically the, the city cemetery okay so i do know that savannah is the most haunted city in the united states of america yeah i thought we said that charleston was no well actually i learned since i went to charleston that savannah is okay. the most haunted so <laughs> well there we go and now we have the haunted cemetery in the haunted city mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so we're gonna go into some of the history of it first Ooh, okay um it is located east of Savannah, um, like, by the Wilmington River, which is, like, I mean, I don't... <laughs> what? I need to have a map to know where that is, but... Right. For anybody Wait, who, the Wilmington River? Like, the one that's here? Like, it connects? I mean, I'm sure it does. I'm not sure. It might. Hmm. I don't... Who knows geography? Not us. Yeah. I know. I tried to look that up, but I failed, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, first, it was a plantation. Mm -hmm. Bonaventure as plantation. they all are yes exactly um and it was bought in six or not 16 1762 by a british loyalist mm -hmm. back when the revolutionary war was a thing oh wow <laughs> um and it was seized by authorities after the war Ooh. and like auctioned off so then it like switched hands again but it actually did play like a big part in the revolutionary war oh really it's crazy yeah like people went there like to like, as a base, I guess, I think. Mm hmm Um, and they, there could be, like, a bunch of unmarked graves because of that. Oh, God, I already know so, this place is super haunted. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, so after that, the, um, it was, like, auctioned off, went to a new owner, um, and the mansion ended up getting, like, caught on fire what? twice. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, cause, so, like, I guess there's a big mansion on the plantation. Got mm -hmm. caught on fire in 1771 and in 1800. Oh, wow. And I, one of the things I read said the fire was during a party, and the party just kept going. <laughs> <laughs> so I just think that's kind of funny. <laughs> that They're like, we don't care, we're just gonna keep keep. Okay, <laughs> wait, side story is that one time I went to a party, uh -huh. and the floor caved in. And they were like, you know oh what? Oh, I remember that. They were like, you know what? I mean, we don't really... There's nothing we can do about it now. So let's just move the party to the back. Oh, my... <laughs> it's like the same situation. Just bad things yeah, happening. Just keep it. the party going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so after all that happened, it was sold again in March of 1846. And they sold the land to be a private cemetery. Okay. Why are they selling it so much? <laughs> well, I mean, land gets bought and sold. I guess. I guess. I suppose. You know, this is, it's been like, 
a few years. Like, <laughs> yeah, just a few. A hundred years. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, well, anyway, so it's ca- it was called the Evergreen Cemetery Company at first, um, and then in 1907, it was sold to the city of Savannah to be a public cemetery, mm. and was renamed to Bonaventure Cemetery. I... See, and I, I also feel like I'm saying that wrong. I, I feel like why. it's Bonavin. Well, actually, I, I have no idea, actually. Bo- I don't know. If I'm saying it wrong, I'm sorry, but <laughs> that's just how <laughs> Sorry to the ghosts at the cemetery. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. So it was renamed to match the name of the plantation originally. Oh. So that's pretty no. cool. Is it cool, though? <laughs> I guess. I don't know. <laughs> um, and in 1933, Greenwich Cemetery, which was, like, right next to it, became a part of that cemetery, so now it's, like, bigger. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was also built on top of what used to be a plantation. Oh, wow. So, this is all plantation land, Revolutionary War land. Wow. That turned into a cemetery. hmm so, Sounds exactly cool. like the perfect equation for a haunting. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so here's, like, there's two different stories of, like, how it got famous, um, two things that, like, led up to it being, being famous, I guess, um, in 1867, John Muir began, like, a thousand-mile walk from Kentucky to Florida. Do you know who John Muir was? John Mayer? (laughs) No. (laughs) M-U-I-R. No, I don't know who that is. Um, he, he was, like, an environmentalist guy. Oh, Um, love that. He was, like, the father of national parks. Because he oh. like advocated for them and stuff, and he was a naturalist, oh, environmental we love philosopher. John. Yeah, um, he was a botanist, advocate for pre- preservation of wilderness. So I guess he did this thousand mile walk to like show that the nature should be preserved <laughs> and mm-hmm. stuff. Um, and he wrote a book during it too. Mm. So, um. He was also an iconic figure in, like, the Sierra Club. Do you mm-hmm. know mm. the Sierra Club's, like, environmental group? I have no idea what that is, but... <laughs> it's, like, it's just an environmental group that advocates for what all the stuff he advocated for. Oh, so, cool. he's, like, one of the famous people in their history. Oh, nice. Um, and he, I mean, he was a little racist, not gonna lie. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, it doesn't but, surprise uh, me. Yeah, in some of his, like, later years, I think he got better, but... In his book, um, yeah, it, he wasn't, there was, like, a passage that I read from it, and I was like, ooh, this is not good. Okay, actually, my support for him is lessening as we speak. Yeah. Yeah. We love but, the environment, I, mean, I don't know, he still advocated for yeah, all the no, we love the environment. So it's like, it, it I don't know. <laughs> it's a mixed bag. Um, but anyways, so he did this thousand-mile walk from Kentucky to Florida, can uh, you imagine doing no, that? Like that walking? Could, would not ever be me. <laughs> yeah, and he also had no route. Okay, then how the heck did he know where he was going? <laughs> I don't know. I guess he just took a map. He and followed he the like, stars. Kind of. Uh, he said he would go by the wildest, leafiest, and least trodden way he could find. Um, wow. Okay. So, like, he was like, I just need to take the path into the wilderness and not take any of the ones that are, like, already paved for me. I mean, I get where he's coming from, but I would be so lost if that was me. Yeah, well, like, he did it, so I don't know <laughs> how he did it. But... Wow. Yeah, so, I forget. I should have wrote down what the name of his book was. I guess I didn't. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he wrote a book about it. Um, and in October of his journey, he actually stayed in the Bonaventure Cemetery. Stayed in it? Yes, he stayed for six days and six nights. Just slept in it? Why? Yes. Um, he, he slept on graves. Why? It was the, he said it was the safest and cheapest thing to do while he waited for money from home. I would love to know what he means by the word safe. <laughs> yeah, I, don't really I don't think we have the same meaning for that word at all. Yeah. I mean, because I guess he didn't have any money. He's like waiting for money to get to him. Cause, yeah, like, well, I get that It's not that like part. there's any ATMs or Venmo. Or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he's like, eh, I'm just going to sleep on the graves. <laughs> Um, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, but he also said, like, the cemetery was breathtakingly beautiful mm-hmm. and, like, wrote a whole chapter in his book about it and it was called Camping in the Tombs. Hmm. It's that is chapter. so spooky. Ooh. Yeah. It sounds, like, so pretty, though, what he wrote about it. I want to go. Um, he describes that, like, 
the plants and creatures there, trees, vines, flowers, butterflies, and like he says, happy insects. Oh, what's that? Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. And this quote is so. I love this quote. He said, "The whole place seems like a center of life. The Aww. dead do not reign there alone." Oh, okay. Well, that's cute. Yeah, so it makes me want to go there. Like, oh, I want to go. Juju, write it down. Yeah, honestly. Um, so, yeah, it's not, like, when I pass cemeteries, they're just, like, open field with, like, all the graves and stuff. Mm -hmm. But this one seems great because it has trees and, like, shrubbery and, like, all these plants growing mm -hmm. around it. Yeah. And it just makes it, like he said, like, full of life. Yeah, we love so. that. And honestly, that's probably why it's more haunted because the ghosts actually want to stay there. True. Okay, like, that it's makes pretty. sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the other thing that sort of made this place big and like made people want to go visit it um, was like this book called Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil Ooh. by John Barrent. Mm -hmm. Um in 1993, a photo was taken in the cemetery for the book cover. Oh, wow. And the book was, like, about Savannah. Mm-hmm. So, like, it wasn't really about the cemetery. It's just about the city. But the picture on the cover really blew up. Oh, we love um, that. And the photo was taken of a sculpture that was in the cemetery. And it was called Bird Girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's you. Yeah, honestly. Um, it was made by Sylvia Shaw Judson, and it's, like, a girl, she's, like, holding two bowls. Yeah. Um, and I guess they're, like, bird baths. Mm -hmm. that, is that why it's called Bird Girl? That makes sense, know. yeah. Yeah. And it's a cute little sculpture. Mm. Um, this place sounds so cute. I know. To be a cemetery. <laughs> like, it's haunted, sure, but, like, I'm gonna get into the haunted part, but, like, it seems so <laughs> Seems pretty chill to me. me. And also, I read that people of Savannah, like, they just walk around it like a park, I think. Oh. Because it's so pretty. Oh, wow. I really want to see this place. Yeah. Yeah, like, I'll definitely find pictures. And pictures things. on our Instagram. Go check them yes. out. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, where did I leave off? Okay, so four of these sculptures were made, and, like, one of them was bought by a family in Savannah to be placed at the, at, like, their grave sites. Mm -hmm. um, and they named that particular one Little Wendy. Oh, Little Wendy. Mm -hmm. And legend has it that the statue is haunted by the ghost of the girl who posed for the statue. Oh, interesting. Um, Lorraine Greenman. Which is like, they call her Little Wendy, but like her name's Lorraine. So. <laughs> that is so messed up. <laughs> Maybe she like yeah. went by Wendy. I mean, I don't know how that connects at all, but. No, I think they just, the family just named her that. And then afterwards <laughs> people were like, oh, this girl haunts it. Oh, yeah. You know? Sad for yeah. Lorraine. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, so, you know, this is also kind of sad. They donated the statue to it, an art museum. What? Yeah, to avoid destruction from tourists. Well, so. I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense. Yeah. So, like, that statue's not, no longer in the cemetery. It's in the local art museum. Oh, okay. So, um, it's still in Savannah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, but it's kind of sad if it actually is haunted, because now she's, like, not in the cemetery. Yeah, or maybe she stayed. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe she, like, had something else to connect to. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, and then the book itself, because um, I said it was mainly because of the book cover, but, like, the book itself had a big impact on the cemetery, too, because, like, one character was a voodoo priestess. Mm-hmm. Voodoo priestess. Yeah. I said that weird. Um, she was, like, based on a real person. Oh. And she would, like, take cemetery soil for her rituals. Mm -hmm. So now people will go to that cemetery and collect soil as a souvenir. Oh, okay. I don't know about all that. That sounds haunted. <laughs> I would not recommend doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Unless you're, like, a certified voodoo priestess, I would certified. highly not recommend to do that. Right, right, right. Honestly, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I'll get into some of the ghosts of the cemetery. But unfortunately, like... I couldn't find as many as I thought I was going to find. So, like, this is kind of so short. Sad. But we'll go through it. Um, or the maybe most people are one... too afraid to talk about their ghost story from there. Honestly, maybe. Oh, and another thing is, 
the cemetery is it closes when it gets dark so you can't really you're not allowed to go yeah at night hmm well, that's so maybe late. they come out at night more. True. You we know? gotta break in. Just kidding. We won't do that. <laughs> no, we won't do that. Wink, wink. No, we won't. I'm really kidding. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, but they then they do tours, but you can also just, like, walk through. Wait, so, so can you do the tour at night? No. <sighs> God, why are they taking away all the fun? <laughs> I don't know. Um... Okay, so one of the most famous ghosts in the cemetery is Little Gracie. <laughs> Why are they all little something? <laughs> She's a little girl. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. She was the daughter of a local hotel owner. Mm-hmm. Um, and she would always, like, greet people coming in. And she was so sweet. Um, but she got pneumonia, and she died at six years old. Oh, no. No, yeah, Gracie. unfortunately. Um, and her grave has a life-size statue of her sitting there, and people say, like, she will greet you as, as you walk by. I am so sorry, but that creepy. is so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> like that, I know she's not evil, but, mm. She's so sweet, though. No, there's more that makes it, you'll probably think it seems creepy, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, oh, and the, the statue, for one, um, like, that was made based on just a picture. Like, the person who made the sculpture. Mm-hmm. That's... I think that's awesome, because it's, yeah. it's hard enough making it with, like, a life-size person to base it off of. Yeah. But they based it off of a picture. Yeah, that is really crazy. Why... Do you know why they made the statue of, like, her body? I feel like that's so weird. Well, the parents wanted it. Okay, yeah. They were like... Yeah. Yeah, they that's just sad. wanted to have her sitting there as a memorial mm -hmm. you know i feel like i mean they were rich they had the money to do yeah. it owned a hotel yeah they um, might as well i guess that was sort of the thing to do if you had money mm -hmm. right i don't know i guess i've never seen a human statue <laughs> of <laughs> cemetery but if i, I, saw I was rich i would do it. she's really cute she looks cute mm -hmm. <laughs> okay this is what you're gonna think is creepy though um People say that her cheeks are warm in the cold of winter when the moon is full. Mm-hmm. Oh, do you mean the statue? Yes. <laughs> oh, I was so confused. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> no, oh, like, no. the statue, yeah, mm -hmm. like, her cheeks will be warm Ew, when it's, like, okay. the cold of winter and the full moon is out. Okay, here's why that scares me. More than a ghost, have you seen Percy Jackson? No. <laughs> I think no, I've asked I you this before <laughs> on this podcast. First of all, that is a crime, that is a I sin, know. that is a Actually, tragedy. Well, I might have seen it, but I don't really remember it, is what the thing is. Okay, well, regardless, let me give you a quick backstory, is that Medusa is in this movie, and she turns people to stone, and your story is making me think that what if her body is not a statue, what if she is turned to stone, and that's why her cheeks get warm? Oh. Either way, that's really creepy, and I don't like that at all. Ooh. Hmm. I mean, that's a good theory, I guess. I know. <laughs> and the fact that it's such a lifelike pic like statue. Exactly. And he made it, no, made it based off a picture. Seems yeah, a little like, suspect. Or did he just make her into stone? Exactly. <laughs> Interesting. New theory. <laughs> Conspiracy theory over. Probably just a ghost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. So... Where else was I? Okay. People see her ghost at night, which is like, I just said that the, <laughs> yeah. it closes at night, so. Liars. Know. But also, John John Muir, or whatever, mm -hmm. he said that he stayed there overnight. Yeah. So maybe that has just been a recent thing. Yeah. And also, like, I just said we are going to try to break in. I'm kidding, but, like, I'm positive that people probably can get in there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Maybe. Like, mm -hmm. I'm sure that they can. So I think they they might have only done the hours thing just for like because there's so much tourism to oh, it now. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. Because they don't want people disrespecting graves for sure. of the night. For and, sure. Yeah. I don't know. I still I'm thinking back to him sleeping on the grave. So that is so weird for six nights. No, that is so weird. I'm so sorry. If it was <laughs> one, maybe you're desperate. Six. Yeah. No. <laughs> and nobody said anything like that. Right. <laughs> Okay, anyway. So, some people see her as a ghost at night. Um, Lil Gracie, she will wear, she wears all white, and she plays in the square 
um, where her father's hotel once stood. Oh, my heart. So I guess the hotel's not there anymore. Mm-hmm. So sad. Um, and then when you get too close to her, she'll vanish without <sighs> a trace. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Um, visitors will leave toys for her to play with, and she loves that. Mm. But people say that she will cry tears of blood if her toys are removed. So you gotta, you <laughs> can't take her toys me. from her. Okay. Um, I won't take any of her toys. Don't you worry about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I guess, I don't know if, like, the people who take care of the cemetery are like, okay, we're gonna leave all these toys for you. We're not gonna <laughs> take them. Yeah, I bet there's a lot, too. Since yeah. the story is, like, popular. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, like, what happens when people like leave stuff for people at at a graveyard like i guess i mean i don't know like because people come and clean them like if it's like super Mm -hmm. old stuff yeah i don't know oh because i was gonna remember you went to that cemetery did you talk about that oh yeah i completely forgot about that i forgot i had too many things to mention you think they're gonna take that okay back um side story i went um, over Memorial Day weekend to West Virginia to see my family, and while I was there, we went out to the Greenbrier Ghost's cemetery, her, like, tombstone, where she's buried at, and there were so much stuff on, like, on her tombstone. Go to Instagram if you want to see the picture of it, and there's, like, I mean, a bunch of flowers, a bunch of little trinket things, you know, little cute things, and there was a bunch mm-hmm. of confetti, and there was even money on top, and, I mean, people, like, know, like, the graves, you know, that are popular and famous. I mean, her tombstone literally says Greenbrier Ghost. Yeah. And so they leave everything that's there, but, like, once, like, the flowers, like, get bleached by the sun and stuff, they'll, like, remove them, you know, Mm -hmm. and clean the stuff eventually, but for, I mean, for the most part, it'll just sit there for a while. Mm -hmm. So probably the same thing there. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because I wonder, like, because since people go by and leave things for these famous graves... Like, yeah. it's got to build up over time. Oh, I'm sure. I'm but sure. But I guess... But you can't take them because she'll cry blood. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, are there <laughs> toys from, like, a hundred years ago or something? <laughs> like, no, I'm sure they clean it. I'm. They yeah. have to. Or else the whole cemetery would probably be overran with toys. <laughs> yeah, probably. So I'm, she might just be crying some blood some days. Yeah, unfortunately. All right. So there's a few other things that make it a little bit haunted. Um... This was, like, the most I could get on a story was the one of Little Gracie. Um, Mm -hmm. But there are, like, many people who have reported that the eyes of the statues will follow you around. Because there's other statues in the cemetery, too. Not just hers. No way. So, like, you'll walk by and they'll just be looking at you. Dude, I'm telling you, I don't think that these are statues. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That really is creepy, though. But also, I feel like everybody says that about pictures and, like, statues. Uh Just because they're creepy in general. Yeah. Um, and there's also a statue named Corinne, um, and she smiles at the visitors that she likes. Ew. I hope she likes me when we go. (laughs) Yeah. Well, actually, I think the thing that I read, it said that she smiles at the visitors she fancies. So maybe Um. that's like, she like, likes, likes. (laughs) (sighs) Well, maybe she'll like me. She really likes them. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay, and then this one, I don't know how you're going to feel about this. There's a pack of phantom dogs roaming the cemetery. <laughs> I kind of like that. <laughs> Unless yeah, they're evil. Some people, some people call them hellhounds. Okay, well, if they're hellhounds, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't really know, but supposedly there's ghost dogs. Mm-hmm. So. That's cool, though. I don't know if that's like, pr- they're protecting the cemetery, which is like, that's good. Yeah, no, they're... that would be good. Um. Yeah, I just read that people have heard dogs or something and then they look over it's not there mm-hmm. you know? so that's pretty much all of the hauntedness of it um mm-hmm. <laughs> there's a fun fact though Ooh. people get married at the cemetery <gasps> hmm like you can get married at it <laughs> well you did say it was pretty yeah yeah I have to see a picture of it to really judge, but I don't know about the vibes of that the marriages <laughs> there. Like, yeah. I would want to be married somewhere where there's just not any sort of history, which is, mm-hmm. like, honestly impossible, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But that also is really cool. 
I know, like, there. it would be, like, a good Halloween vibe. Yeah. You're trying for that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, I mean, from the pictures, it's basically, like, a park, yeah. but with graves. <laughs> <laughs> so. I mean, I kind of like it, honestly. I'm down with the spooky vibe. Yeah. Um, and one other fun fact. There are no plots left. The cemetery it's is full? currently sold out. No vacancy. Hashtag. Yeah, Find so either else. I don't think it's full yet, but like people have bought all the plots. Yeah, yeah, but eventually it will be full because it's already sold out. Yes. Wow, that's so crazy. Yeah, so that is the Bonaventure Cemetery. Love that. I really want to go there. But I know I really, really want to go there at night. Yeah. And is it really bad that I really want to steal one of the toys just so I can see if she cries blood? <gasps> I don't want to make her cry, though, but I just... I know. <laughs> but I just want to see if it's true. I want a little crazy cry. <laughs> okay, but I really actually am scared for anybody who's seen Percy Jackson. I'm really afraid that she's trapped in the statue. <laughs> like, I really hope that's not the case. I mean, I don't think that it is. Just saying it could possibly be. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go and watch Percy Jackson. Dude, I that, think I have seen it, but I just really don't remember. I just don't understand. That whole book series was my favorite thing in the whole world. When like <laughs> in like middle school. So I, I'm hurt that you haven't read them and you don't even remember the movie if you have seen it. <laughs> in middle school I was obsessed with Twilight and The Hunger Games. Well, I was obsessed so. with those things too. Well, I, I guess I missed out on the Percy Jackson. <laughs> I guess it's a freaking Pennsylvania thing. Yeah, no, I mean, I feel like some people liked it, but I just didn't go for it. So you were just lame, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. really funny. Okay, well, <clears throat> um, this week, I am doing, do you have any idea what I'm doing? No. You said, <laughs> uh, didn't you say it was like in the South? Oh, it is in the South. I accidentally almost gave it away right before we started recording, and I'm glad that I didn't. Because... Yeah, I was I was trying to let me just mm -hmm. just interrupt again. Oh no, it's okay. um, I was <laughs> trying to find one for Hilton Head. Yeah, um, because I was just there, so I was like, "Is there anything haunted there?" But mm -hmm. I couldn't really find anything. So well, that's good. I honestly. tried to do something close enough. So yeah, I mean that's pretty close. I don't actually know how close yeah. that is, but it's close. like an hour away. From Savannah. Um, wait, I have a really funny story before I tell you my story. Okay. <laughs> okay. So when we went to Charleston, South Carolina, not that long ago, we booked a ghost tour for like the next day, mm -hmm. like when we had first got there. And it was like getting time to go and we were like really tired. We just like really needed a break. And so we were going to call and see what time our like thing was. And we realized that we booked a ghost tour while we were in Charleston, South Carolina, we booked it for Savannah, Georgia. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so we had to call, and luckily they gave us our money back, but I just thought that was so That's funny. That's a little far. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. But that brings me to my story. And this um, week, I'm doing The Legend of the Charleston Jail. Ooh. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so the Charleston Jail, obviously, is located in Charleston, South Carolina, Mm -hmm. which um love that city um one of my faves and i've it's, never actually been there oh my gosh Savannah, we have to go it's so fun it's literally so fun and also right now they're, they're filming um outer bank season two there <gasps> so Ooh. i really want to go back yeah, we should go. but um okay so this story is going to be another one where i have personal experience because this is one that i have investigated Ooh. with the um group from uncw so mm -hmm. anyways we and let me just say um this investigation was probably the craziest one i was on so i'm excited to tell the story yeah i'm excited because <laughs> um it was really scary and i hadn't i had to like block some of it out of my memory because it scared me so bad so remembering oh, this geez. was like <laughs> kind of fun <laughs> kind of fun kind of scary but okay so the Charleston Jail was built in 1802, and it started as a large four-story building, mm -hmm. but sadly, the four-story was demolished because there was, like, an earthquake or just a bunch of stuff had to go. So, now it's only three stories, but they did add, like, an octagonal wing in 1856, 
And that's how it is today. So it's like three stories, but there's also like an octagon kind of on the side of it. But it's pretty big. Right. And very creepy. Um, very, very creepy. Even from the outside, it just looks, you can just look at it and you're like, okay, that's haunted. I don't even need it to know what it is. It's haunted. Okay, um, now I have to see it. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, go to our Instagram if you want to see it because it's very creepy. Like I can't mm -hmm. even describe to you. When I rolled up, I didn't even expect it to be that creepy. Oh no, it's probably the creepiest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and I wonder like if it looked better when it was first built or if it was just always that creepy. Because it, I can't yeah. ever imagine it looking normal. Is it just because it's like, like old and it's like brick and dark and it's like in a back alley? It's just so creepy. Oh yeah, <laughs> I that hate didn't it. Sound good. <laughs> no, no. So this one's gonna be kind of different. I'm just gonna tell you about some of the ghosts that are there because okay. I mean, obviously it's a jail. You know, I mean, stuff happened at the jail. We'll get into that. But before we get into that, I'm going to tell you the story of a few of the inmates of the less famous ones. So, we'll start with this guy named Denmark Vesey, I think is how you pronounce it. Who knows? But I had never heard of him before. Have you? Denmark no. Vesey? Yeah. Mm -mm. But he is very famous for leading a slave uprising in Charleston. Um, so, as we know... Charleston is, like, the main place in the South for slavery back in the day. It was, like, the best port city to travel to bring mm -hmm. slaves over, so. Yeah. Yeah, so Denmark Vesey was born into slavery, but he actually became a free man at the age of 32 because he won the lottery. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> so, like, That's he he was, like, playing good. the lottery. Didn't even know they had lottery back then, but he played it and then won, and with the money, he was able to buy him like self to be a free man which is oh. so messed up first of all huh. like that's so messed I mean, up huh. but yeah so awesome. i know so awesome so um so then after that he used like the rest of his money to work against slavery which was really cool oh yeah that's even more awesome <laughs> no <laughs> that's great right so with some of the money he opened the african methodist church in charleston and that church grew really fast. And in just a few months, it had over 2,000 members, which is, like, crazy for the time. Mm -hmm. Um. So, where? I lost my spot. Okay. So, he decided that he had enough people that he, he was like, okay, we can, like, make some change in mm -hmm. this city. So, he decided the way he was going to make some change is that he was going to kill some slave owners who had, like, a lot of slaves. Not just, oh, God. Not just ones that, you know, had, like, two, three. Like, I'm talking, like, big plantation owners, like, people who had a lot of slaves. So, they, like... Okay, see, I... <laughs> not the greatest plan. I don't totally agree with his methods, but also, like, they were slave owners. <laughs> I don't blame him, but I don't really know why he thought that was going to work. Yeah, that's like, exactly I'm, my thought. I don't blame him at all. I would mm -hmm. feel the same hatred if I was in his situation. Definitely. But... I, that, that was not going to end slavery. Mm -mm. <laughs> so, but, um, you yeah, know, especially <laughs> since I haven't even heard of this. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's well, the reason sad. that you haven't heard of it is because he didn't get to kill even one person. Oh, um, the I militia, see, I, see. I guess the police weren't a thing at the time. So it was like the militia, but they found out about the plan and all of the leaders of the group were arrested. Okay. Yeah, and so they were arrested on June 22nd in 1822, and the prison grounds was where they held the trials. So Vessi and five other people were tried in secret and without a jury. So that's illegal, first of oh. all. Um, even back then it was illegal. Mm -hmm. And they were all sentenced to death by hanging, and right after their execution, 30 more of his followers were also executed. Okay. And then right after that, the church that he worked so hard for was disbanded by the city. <gasps> no. So they, like, literally in the matter of seconds, destroyed everything he had worked so hard for. That's It's terrible. so messed up. It's so sad. And I'm like, yeah, okay, his plan wasn't the greatest, but, like, why, why do all of that? Yeah. <sighs> it's so messed up. So, yeah, like, your plan wasn't the greatest, but also owning slaves is not. <laughs> exactly. Part. There's a it's lot like... of issues wrong with this story. <laughs> like... So, oh yeah, um, he is one of the people who haunts the jail. 
because he was killed there. Mm-hmm. So, on to another ghost. Um, is Jacques Alexander Tardy. Have oh. you ever heard of him? No, I have not. <laughs> this man is considered to be the evilest pirate of all time. <gasps> mm-hmm. And he was imprisoned at the jail from 1825 to 1827 because he loved to poison people. It was his favorite pastime. Oh, my God. <laughs> Right. Not for pirating, for, no. for poisoning. Yeah, no, not for pirating, nope. Um, so yeah, man, he sadly committed suicide at the jail, and apparently his ghost torments people at the jail since then. Okay. So he can't just, like, rest in peace or rest and be a chill ghost. No, he's still tormenting people. Hmm. So, that's good. <laughs> that's really good. Yeah. Um, so, but the most notable, the most famous people who were imprisoned at Charleston Jail were John and Lavinia Fisher. Have you ever heard of them? <laughs> no, I have not. I just had to ask. Because I have had you, I had I hadn't heard of the first two, but I did right. know Lavinia Fisher. Because she is the first female serial killer in the United States. At least that's caught. Oh. That was caught, you know. Could have yeah. been more before. But yeah, so her and her husband were just a little Bonnie and Clyde pretty much. They love to kill people and rob them. Oh my god. So they owned an inn and eventually guests, you know, guests were disappearing and people were like, um, where are they going? And obviously after a long time of people disappearing there, they were like, it's gotta be John and Lavinia. So it's undetermined how many people they killed because that's how many they killed was so Jeez. many. Um, so, but it's crazy how they would kill them. So the inn was located at, like, this perfect spot where travel travelers could stop and stay the night. Mm-hmm. Which is just also never a good sign. Don't ever stop at someone that seems too convenient. <laughs> Especially somewhere creepy. I just feel like their place would be so creepy. Yeah, that's probably true. Right. Hmm. Um, so they had, like, this, like, plan. Because, you know, she was literally the first serial killer. People were not scared of women back in these days. Yeah. yeah. So, like, people had no worries when they saw her. They were like, whatever. So, she would lure people in. She was apparently really gorgeous, and most of their victims were men. So, she would lure in the men, bring them into a room, and serve them tea made with oleander leaves, which are poisonous. I've talked about mm-hmm. it before. And she would only, but she would only give them enough to make them fall asleep. So, John could come in and rob them of everything that they had before they killed them. Oh, my God. No, but honestly... You said that um, people didn't used to trust women, and I feel like, mm-hmm. or no, I'm the other th- way. They yeah. trust them too much, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I feel like it's still like that. Oh, like, I, they, definitely. It would, it would still be that easy to do this. Definitely, <laughs> because people use like women in sex trafficking situations because you can still trust women more than men. Yeah. Which is so messed up if you're a woman. If you're a man yeah. too, but like that's just so messed up. Don't mm-hmm. do those things. Um, okay, but there's two ways that they killed their victims, and I sound excited because it's just so crazy that this was, like, so oh, long gosh. ago and that they concocted these plans. So the first way... I'm not ready. When they first started killing, obviously they weren't professionals yet, so they would just stab them. <laughs> so right. So that's the first way. But the second way, they had a trap door underneath... So they had, like, basically a kill room, okay, in the okay. end. It was one room, and they had a trap door underneath the bed that they could drop bodies into the cellar. Oh, my God. What? <laughs> so regardless if they got stabbed or had the trap door, they, um, would, all the bodies were in the cellar of this inn. Oh, my God. So, yeah. Um, okay, so one night... This guy named John Peebles came in. He was staying there. Also, the hotel, or the inn, it's called the Six Mile House. So, if you look up, like, the murders of the Six Mile House, you can read more about it. But, um, Lavinia actually turned him away because the hotel was full. Mm -hmm. Um, but she was like, you know, yeah, you can come in and take a rest, you know. Because there's always one room that's open at the inn. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Wait, so do they just drop them down there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just leave them. Mm-hmm. And I think it was like a pretty far fall. But oh my god, with all those bodies. <sighs> yeah, disgusting. Literally awful. disgusting. <laughs> so um, 
Okay, yeah, so John Peebles, she, he came in. She was like, you know what, it's, you know, we don't have any room, but just you can, you know, chill here for a little bit. She made him her oleander tea, her special. But John didn't like tea, so he, like, very sneakily poured it into a plant. You know, not because he didn't want to look rude. He wasn't like, I don't right. like tea. But, um, you know, they were talking and talking, and she's like, why is this man not falling asleep? Like, why isn't this poison working? Mm-hmm. So she was like, you know what? Looks like a room has opened up. So, I don't know how, but it has. Magically opened up. So Peebles was like, very sus about the situation, but he was like, oh, you know what? It's okay. Fine. So, but he was like extremely suspicious. I don't know why. I guess he had just a gut feeling that like something mm-hmm. was up. So he had his guard up and he had actually decided to sleep in the wooden chair, like near the bedroom door to be more alert if anything happened. Like this man literally okay. thought something was going to happen. Yeah. So a loud sound woke him up in the middle of the night and... <laughs> I cannot even imagine this. He was so scared to look and see what it was because he just had felt something all night that something was going to happen. He hears a noise and he's like, oh my God, here it is. Do you know what he found, bro? What? He looked was... up and realized that the bed was descending into the floor. Through yeah, the trap, the trap door. door. Oh yes. my God. Yes. <laughs> like, well, good thing you... he didn't sleep on the bed. Oh he was my like, God. thank God I didn't sleep on the bed. So he ended up jumping out of the window and got on his horse and ran to the police. And that's how they were caught. Oh, my God. On February 18th in 1819, the police came because of John and searched the inn and found all of the evidence of all of these missing men and all of their bodies in oh my God. the cellar. So they were brought straight to Charleston Jail and sentenced to death by hanging. Is that not Jesus. so insane? Dude, that is so scary. Like, can you imagine if these people were alive today, how evil they would be with all the other things that they could use? This is early 1800s, and they already had a contraption of a deathbed trap door. Horrifying. And you know what also is crazy? When these people were, like, sentenced to death, like, didn't they die, like, immediately? Not immediately, but way faster than today. Yeah. But, no, not immediately, because... So, they tried to appeal their cases... But okay. the reason that it didn't work is because they escaped from prison. Oh, my. So, honestly, if they didn't try to escape, their case might have been appealed. So, thank God they didn't get it. Thank God they did try to escape and that they're, they're dumb. Yeah. So, they decided to make a rope from prison sheets to try to, like, climb out the window. Because, you know, jails weren't secure back then. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, John got away, but the rope was it wasn't sturdy at all. And Lavinia was stuck there oh my God. which is just so funny to me and what's even more so we already know they're dumb they're stupid for so many reasons but they're so stupid because john was like i cannot leave my love lavinia in there alone so he went back to the prison and turned himself in <laughs> <laughs> even though he knew he literally knew he was gonna get killed how dumb literally so dumb so the guards were like okay guys we gotta keep real heavy watch on these guys their flight risk <laughs> um yeah literally <laughs> so um they were arrested february 18th 1819 and on february 18th 1820 exactly a year later they were hanged at the gallows of the charleston jail on the property um wow so up up until the days before um they were killed john called for the help of Reverend Richard Furman, kind of, like, as a last attempt to, like, save his soul. Mm -hmm. Um, He counseled him every single day, and John actually had the preacher read a letter, like, right before he was hanged, um, and it claimed that he was innocent and wrongfully convicted. I'm like, okay, sir. (laughs) Like, we know that's not true. Yeah, I don't believe it. (laughs) No. Um, And the crowd didn't believe it either. They were like, um, sir... It's all over the papers. I don't know if there was papers back then, but, you know, they're like, it's everywhere. So we know you did it. And so that made them really mad. And they were like, kill him. <laughs> you know how it be. Mm-hmm. Um, but he maintained his innocence until the very end. Lavinia, on the other hand, um, she really didn't care about her soul at all. She didn't try to save herself. Not even one bit. She insisted on wearing her wedding gown on her execution day. 
Honestly, um, what a boss move. Like, honestly, girl boss move. boss. Hashtag <laughs> girl boss? <laughs> no, just kidding. No. <laughs> we do That's not. So we funny. do not. Like Lavinia, we just have to joke about the hashtag girl boss. Um, she also refused to go to the gallows. <laughs> she was like, I'm not going. So <laughs> the guards had to carry her kicking and screaming. They literally had to drag her down there. And oh my God. everyone she was yelling at everybody in the crowd in the crowd. They were like, It's your fault I'm gonna die. It's not mine, it's your fault. And they're like, You're the murderer lady. <laughs> um, yeah, like you're the one who throw all these people down there. <laughs> right. And so the executioner his dummy self was struggling to tie the noose around her neck and she was like you know what no i'm gonna die on my own terms and her last words were if you have a message that you want to send to hell give it to me and i'll carry it and then she jumped and the noose wasn't even all the way on her neck but that was it for her and the fisher's bodies were never um claimed by any family members or anything so their bodies remain on the property to this very day, and they have never left the grounds of the prison. They, do Isn't they have, crazy? like, a cemetery on there? That's what I was trying to think. I don't... I guess they do somewhere, but I didn't walk around the outside that much. Mm-hmm. I was mostly just on the inside. But I guess there has to be. Because yeah, I think like a lot of people are buried there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Oh. So, um, Charleston Jail is said to be haunted by many ghosts. Um, apparently... Over 10,000 people died there, and that was only, like, counted while the jail was operational. That's a lot of people <laughs> to die. Oh, uh, yeah. And it was not even open that long. And like I said, John and Lavinia were the most famous. Um, people say that they smell women's perfume throughout the jail sometimes, and they say that that's Lavinia because she, like, I mean, she was the only woman there. Mm-hmm. So, like, who else would it be? <laughs> Okay, uh, did that hotel not smell horrible? <laughs> I'm sure that it did. It had to, right? I mean, yeah. I don't know. I really don't know. And I don't know how long it was open for either. It could not have been a long time, but... Yeah. I don't, I'm sure it did smell absolutely atrocious. <laughs> oh my god. Um, there are also said to be ghosts of previous prison guards, and specifically on the third floor of the jail... And they're seen with rifles in their hands. Isn't that crazy? <gasps> Don't like that at all. I mean, they're not really they evil. They used to carry rifles? Jeez. I guess so. Because this was, like, a pretty, like, not big, but it was a, like, very well-known prison. Like, people were, like, brought here. Because, you know, Charleston right. was the main city. So. Yeah. Plus, I mean, pretty high security, I guess, you could say, even though, <laughs> not really. But, yeah. like, the <laughs> first female serial killer was brought there. So, you know it's a serious place. Um, Mm -hmm. so I mentioned the one famous pirate at the jail, but actually there are a lot of pirate ghosts that haunt this jail because there were a lot of pirates being caught and brought to this jail from like the port at Charleston, you know? Mm -hmm. So apparently a lot of pirate ghosts, which that just reminds me of the Scooby-Doo movie. (laughs) Don't know what it's called, (laughs) but yeah, we love Scooby-Doo. Oh, I know what you're talking about. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Um... Um, A man named Daniel Duncan was also a convicted murderer in the jail, and he was actually the last to be hanged before the gallows were torn down. His ghost said to be there. Um, Okay. Anyway, basically, lots of ghosts. Tons of them. Don't have time to name all of them. But as I said, I have investigated Charleston Jail, and one ghost that I have not talked about up until this point is one that I had the most interaction with. And everybody that I've talked about has either been guards or inmates, but George Rogers Clark Todd was a very skilled surgeon during the Civil War, and after the war, he got a job at the jail to be the doctor slash surgeon Mm. if he needed to be. And historical accounts all show that Mr. Todd was a very unusually cruel man and would perform medical experiments on prisoners literally for the only reason is to torture them even if they were in there for like like doing nothing wrong just (sighs) torturing them for no reason um he should have been in the jail yes he should have been in the jail and also fun fact this is a very fun fact um he is the brother of mary todd lincoln aka abraham lincoln's brother-in-law oh my god isn't that insane like what 
I did not know that up until I was doing this research. And I was that like, what? That is crazy. But yeah, he sure is. Anyway. Weird how things are randomly connected I, like that. Right. But then I'm thinking about it. I'm like, yeah, no. I mean, Abraham Lincoln seems so far, but he was definitely around these parts. Like, you know? Oh my God. He really, his brother-in-law is just over there <laughs> killing people. Being so bad. Like he being does. So bad. Um, so I'll get more into him in a minute, but people also have seen the ghost of the executioner and apparently he was a really big drinker. So people say that they'll randomly smell like alcohol. I'm like, that's crazy. Turn up, I guess. <laughs> and, yeah. Pass, pass the bottle. Right. <laughs> For real. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's also reports of a little boy ghost and I couldn't really find anything like why, like, I don't think he was in jail, but I don't know. I don't know where he Maybe comes from. somebody's son. Maybe. Maybe I don't know. I feel really like sad. people used to bring their kids to work all the time, even if they were yeah, in prison. Honestly. Like, no, they yeah. would. There was like, no oh, child. We don't have, child, we don't have child care. No. We're gonna... yeah. They're coming to jail with us. Exactly. <laughs> um, okay. So we'll get into what I experienced now. So I already said it literally is the creepiest place I have ever seen in my whole life. It just looks so haunted, decrepit horrifying mm -hmm. so even driving up i cannot even describe the feeling i was so scared like most places i've been i'm not that scared driving up mm -mm, not this place i just felt not good vibes whatsoever yeah. um we go in and we set up base camp in like a random storage room on the second floor mm -hmm. and I, so i didn't actually go on the first couple of investigations there were a lot of like new people on that trip and they were, like, really eager to go. So, I was like, just go. So, I ended up helping set up the equipment. Which I normally did anyway. But I did a lot more, like, for this one. Mm -hmm. And me and a handful of people went up to the third floor. Fun fact, that's where Lavinia Fisher was imprisoned. Her cell was up there. Um, and that's where people say they see the prison guard with the rifle. Mm -hmm. And my job was to set up the infrared camera and make sure that it was recording. So, I... We were at base camp. I grabbed fresh batteries. Just opened the battery pack. Very important to know. Walk up, put okay. them in the camera, position it. I, and they were like, put it on like where Lavinia's cell was. So I did that. Turned it on. The light is on. Recording. I can see the light is recording. Made sure multiple times because I was like, I'm not going to be in charge of something messing up. Not me. Not today. <laughs> um, but at the end of the night, sadly, when I went to get it and turn it off, it was completely dead. Looked at the footage. Didn't record a single thing. <gasps> Not a single thing. What? And I'm like, listen, <laughs> I promise you, fresh batteries. It was recording. And I'm like, it didn't even record me turning it on is the thing. And I saw it record. I saw the light on. Yeah. It should have at minimal recorded me, like, hitting the button on. It didn't. Right. Nothing. Absolutely That's nothing. That's insane. So I hated that. And people were like, are you sure? You, are you sure you didn't not turn it on? I was like, no, you don't understand that. I absolutely turned it on. So don't really know mm -hmm. what happened with that. Um, so the first investigation that I was actually on was to this like big common room that apparently that's where like a bunch of like the regular prisoners were held like on the second floor. But actually none of the cells are in the prison anymore. They like removed all the metal and stuff except for one cell. Lavinia cell and even though her cell was on the third floor they move like the metal like square that she was in onto the second floor for like tours and stuff mm -hmm. so that's the room just imagine this huge empty room with one cell in the middle of it that was Lavinia's oh cell gosh. and so Jeez. we go in there so they, I guess they they kept the most famous one yeah they did just so that because it's like a historical building now you know you can go mm -hmm. on tours and stuff so yeah, we're going in there, and we ask so many questions, and at one point, it did sound like somebody threw, like, a really big metal, like, maybe, like, a pot or a pan across the room and hit the wall, but nothing, we couldn't find anything, didn't have any idea what made that sound, never found anything, no clue what it was, Ooh. but that was pretty much the only thing that happened in that room, which I was really sad about, because I was like, you're telling me I came all this way and nothing's gonna happen, <laughs> and this is yeah, just, like, cell of the first woman serial killer, like, ugh, lame. And so there's a Ghost Adventures episode on this. 
and Zach Baggins actually goes inside the cell and like stands in there and they like oh. record this like audio clip of her like saying something or whatever but and we were allowed to go in the cell but none of us were brave enough to do it I was like I'm not <laughs> look I'm brave but I'm not trying to get any of that bad juju I mean I feel like I would have went in <laughs> I I was also scared that like if I went in there and they closed the gate I was gonna get stuck in there and also there's no electricity in this building other than like two rooms so we investigated at night and um I mean pretty much we do investigations in the dark anyway just for the scare factor but we didn't have a choice regardless and I did not want to be locked in a dark huge room in the first female serial killer's so, so I chose to not do that. And everybody else, I guess, was thinking the same thing as me. I was like, I mean, I would love to watch somebody else do it, <laughs> but yeah, no. Nope. Yeah. I mean, I guess I get that. Yeah. But it's I mean, if it was daytime, medical. sure. Sign me up. Mm -hmm. But I was like, no, nah, I'm not sure about that. But, um, okay. I just want to say, I'm sorry if you can hear my dog barking <laughs> in the background. Shout out to them. They just want to join, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So They're just funny. saying hi. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, okay. So I got some tea for you too. The lady that like worked at the jail, because people always come like from the place, you know, to show us around and stuff. She told us some pretty juicy insider information on what happened when the ghost adventure people were there investigating, but I don't really want to get sued. <laughs> but if you do want to know, honestly, just DM me on Instagram. I'll tell you what she said because it is crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, what? <laughs> you, say you don't want to get sued. It's that bad. <laughs> it's not really horrible, but like, mm, it's really crazy. So. Yeah. Anyway, I don't want well, to assume you have to tell me that later. Oh, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, anyway, back to the series. Um, on the second investigation I went on, this is where stuff started going down. Um, so we actually got access to the morgue, which apparently a lot of people don't get access to go. I don't really know why we did. I guess she just trusted us after, cause we didn't get, like she didn't, wasn't like up front, like, oh, you can go in the morgue. After we got closer to her, she was like, do you guys want to go in the morgue? And we were like, um, yeah, <laughs> obviously. Mm -hmm. She's like, I don't really let a lot of people go in here, but if you want to, I'll let like one group go in. And so obviously I'm on that group. I'm not missing yeah. that whatsoever yeah. so we go in and this room is really scary because regardless if you believe in ghosts or not there are at one point in time so many dead bodies in there so the energy in that room was very dark and so we get in there it's like me and like five other people they close the door on us and because it's a morgue it's pretty much like vacuum sealed you know even for mm -hmm. then because like you don't want to smell those bodies and it was like, yeah. I'm sure it was like refrigerated in some type of way, even back then. So we're asking the normal questions. And then all of a sudden, this huge gust of wind goes through the room. And I already said, there's not electricity, let alone air conditioning. Like, and it's also summer in Charleston. It was so humid. It was so hot. We were all sweating so much. And this huge gust of wind just comes in a vacuum sealed room. And we were like, um what oh, no. was that yeah that does not seem good no we and there was just no there was no explanation for it was a thing and we were like um okay that's weird and then one person in the group right after that was like guys i think i'm gonna throw up like i need to get out of here right now like right now and like it wasn't from the wind just all of a sudden they felt super sick so we got out of there didn't even question it we were like that's fine we'll leave um so they like went with somebody outside and like got some air and stuff and they were eventually okay and came back but the rest of us decided to go continue and go to the medical slash surgery room mm -hmm. which as i said earlier is where dr todd the evil doctor surgeon worked tortured people yeah so we did like a little investigation in like the operating room but mostly we went into his office okay. um so we get in there again asking questions and so the leader of the club that i was a part of is somebody who was actually i was already good friends with before i even knew about the club and obviously they're the president so they know like how to do things with ghosts you know how to 
you know, what things that they should do. And it's very important to say that number one rule for the club that I was in is do not under any circumstance ever provoke the spirit. Mm-hmm. Ever. It's not cool. Like we're like even if they're mean spirits, it doesn't matter. Like we're we're not here to make them more angry, you know? Yeah. We just want to see if they're real, we want to talk to them. Yeah. So um the president out of anybody should know that rule. It's them. And I don't I didn't ask if I can use their name, so the president is what they're gonna be called from here on out. <laughs> um, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> yes. So we're not really getting anything. I mean, you know, people were like, oh, what's that sound? What's that sound? But, you know, nothing too big. When all of a sudden, the president is, like, starting to be mean to us. Specifically to one other person. Like, somebody asked a question and they were like, why did you ask that? And mm. the president, when I tell you, is the sweetest, nicest, most chill person. I've never seen them mean. Never seen them angry. Ever my whole life. And we were like, wait, what? <laughs> We were just very taken aback by the statement. And just like all of a sudden, the president starts provoking the spirits. Being like, why don't you just answer our questions? Are you stupid? Like, who even are you? Is anybody even here? Like, were you ever even real? Like, absolutely. And just like, just angry. Like, just the amount of anger that I saw in that person. I was like, um, what? And we knew something was up. Luckily, like, we were with a group of, like, people who had been in the club for a hot minute. And we knew this was not the normal actions of that person. And so we were like, hey, do you want to, like, step out and get some air? And they were like, no. Why would I want to leave? I don't need need to leave. And we were like, come on, let's go. And they were like, no, I don't want to (gasps) leave. And so we um, very quickly pulled them outside. (laughs) We all, like, went outside to get some air. And the second we were outside... They were like, um, I'm so sorry. I like don't, I literally don't know what came over me. I don't know what that was. But after that, like we had to stay outside for like 45 minutes because everybody was very shook up about that. And that person was not okay for a minute, like very concerned. And so we all like pretty much left it at that. We didn't really talk about it because I think it very much so like <laughs> scared and impacted them mm-hmm. because I do think that that was, like, a very small possession. That's what it sounds like. That's scary. Um, It I... was really scary. And I was like, I'm not trying to be possessed in any way, shape, or form by that. And I didn't even know if I believed in that at the time. Yeah. And then I witnessed that, and I was like, okay, well, that is, that's that on that, and I'm out. <laughs> so after that, like, we didn't go on any more investigations because I was done. I did not want to see any more. I was very scared. (laughs) And most people were. But there were a couple more investigations. And on one, they were actually in the third floor. And, I mean, I wasn't on it. But they came back with three scratch marks on their back. Some guy in the group. So that was scary. And then after that, we're like, okay, we got to go. We got to get out of here. (laughs) Because things, not anything, nothing good is happening. Everybody's Mm -hmm. getting, everybody was getting sick, getting headaches, getting hurt getting possessed we were like no we gotta go because like mm -mm. and nothing actually happened to me personally there thank god (laughs) but um i wasn't willing to like sit around and see what was gonna happen to me but yeah like i don't know if i would either that's oh my god yeah it was really scary and it's so unbelievable to even like say (laughs) that possession stuff but like i literally witnessed it with my eyes and I probably will never move on from that because that was so scary. Yeah, like, I don't really know if I believe in it totally, but I believe you, like... (laughs) Yeah, and, like, I was just so glad I was with the people that I was with and, like, we were all friends even outside of the thing to know that that was... I mean, like, the president would literally never say those things. And I can't even remember what all... I was so shocked and I was scared. I was, like, literally scared. I was like, what are they going to do? Like, Mm -hmm. are they about to, like, fight? Like, I literally thought that they were going to fight us for asking them. Yeah. Like, it was was horrifying. But to end on not such a scary note, bring it back up a little bit, something really funny happened right as we were about to leave. Okay. So there's one bathroom in the entire place. There's no plumbing. So this bathroom was just added very recently for, like, tours and stuff. Yeah. And it was in, like, the ground floor. So, there's no AC, 
no nothing in this place literally no lights even and it was in the middle of summer it was so hot so humid we were disgusting we had been there all night long and so I just went to pee before we were leaving and I was disgusting so I sprayed some perfume on myself mm-hmm. and I'm washing my hands and all of a sudden I hear everybody freaking out outside and they're like oh my god it's Lavinia's perfume does anybody smell the perfume it's her and I had I was so embarrassed I was so embarrassed because I had to go out and be like I'm so sorry guys that was me I'm I didn't want to smell bad and oh I sprayed the perfume so yeah I was That's really embarrassed so but it's really what funny now just, but what if you just went along with it you're like oh my god I smell it too I think about it all the time and I'm like dang I should have done that <laughs> but you'd be like can't be a lie to you People come up to you like, you smell like it. You're like, oh my god, I think she touched you. She's possessing you. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, that is the legend of the Charleston Jail. Oh my god, that's crazy. I never really heard about that. I know. So, I don't that's... really talk about it. It's really scary. <laughs> I. Yeah. It was definitely the scariest investigation that I went on. And it really made me believe some things that I didn't know that I was going to believe in. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, two very creepy places. I love Charleston. We'll go back to Charleston. We'll probably not go back to the jail, at least not at night. I would maybe go in the day if you wanted to go, but it's very scary. Yeah, I need to go to Charleston, but I don't know if I want to go to the jail. Yeah, well, I'm perfectly fine if we don't want to go to the jail. There's a lot of other spooky places to go. Oh, yes, everywhere in Charleston is haunted, so. Uh so we love that. We do, but I guess that's about all we have this week. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Check out the Instagram for the pics. Please comment about how creepy you think this jail looks because it's disgusting. And then mm-hmm. on the other hand, comment how beautiful you think this garden looks, even though it's a creepy haunted cemetery with possible <laughs> stoned people. Yeah. Not really. Exactly. That's completely my conspiracy theory. <laughs> I kind of believe it. Oh my god. Medusa <laughs> theory. <laughs> so funny. I didn't even think about that. Can I it's just into? straight from Percy Jackson. Which yeah. is exactly why you didn't think about it. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Um, oh, and didn't you say DM you if you want to know something about this Oh story? yeah. Um, theoretically, if you wanted to know what I know about Ghost Adventures, theoretically, wink wink, DM us on Instagram and I'll tell you what they said. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, well, I guess that's all we got for you. Um. We'll see you next week. Cue the music. <laughs>